Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and we have ourselves a humongous leak for our vow, the upcoming Xbox exclusive RPG from Obsidian Entertainment. It's set in the Pillars of Eternity universe, and I cannot wait to lay my hands and my eyes all over it. Today, we have a lot of information to sink our teeth into, and it comes from none other than dad of Xbox, Jez Corden. Jez continues to keep the Xbox family fed by providing us with great information, great leaks, so continue to keep Jez fed by clicking the link to his article in the description down below, checking it out for yourself. But we're gonna be going over all of that in today's video. If you are new here and you're looking for more Obsidian coverage, you know your boy's gonna be right on top of that the second there's stuff to talk about. But also, Xbox, consider subscribing. We have a lot of videos going on here, so we'd love to have you. With that, let's talk about Avowed. Sources familiar with internal plans have reached out to us in recent months offering details on Avowed, moving through pre-production towards a playable alpha state. Indeed, Obsidian is likely close to having a working early version of the game with many mechanics and core gameplay pillars already implemented. I can't be sure how old some of the footage is, but there's a good chance it's further along. The Outer Worlds fans have plenty of reasons to be excited about Obsidian's upcoming slate, given that The Outer Worlds 2 has been confirmed. Avowed seems to be based on a similar, albeit enhanced, engine from The Outer Worlds, complete with action-oriented, first-person combat, and deep RPG exploration and narrative systems. We were told Avowed will feature multiple class playstyles and borrow from Skyrim's two-handed combat system. You could wield two daggers and be a stealthy rogue, or dive into archery with a two-handed bow. You could use a combination of swords and magic or go full two-handed magic, which is required to wield some of the game's more potent spells. So we assumed a lot of this based off the end of the Avowed Reveal trailer where you see the sword come up, you see the spell hand come up, and I immediately thought, that's Skyrim right there. And Obsidian taking on Skyrim sounds very much tantalizing. But what I think is a little bit underrated in this part of the article is the engine. As much as I love Obsidian, they have made pretty buggy games, and it's because of how much there is in their games, how many choices and consequences are within them. There's a lot of dynamic elements occurring, so naturally there are going to be some bugs, so I find them forgivable. Others did not. One thing The Outer Worlds was really complimented for when it came out was its level of polish. It was actually quite surprising for Obsidian. Even myself during the review period went, wow. This is pretty well ironed out. So seeing that they're building off of that is very much encouraging on a technical front, but let's get into the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about the actual game itself. Avowed will feature many elements Pillars of Eternity fans will be familiar with. Wizard spells like Jolting Touch, which can fry enemies with forks of lightning, will be present. Two-handed spells like Fireball are conjured using complex looking hand gestures, but decimate enemies in a storm of magma and fire. I also saw status spell effects like Fetid Karis, imbuing enemies with corrosive poison. Weapon enchantments seem to be a big feature too, with magically enchanted swords and frozen arrows as examples. Pillar Styles guns may also appear in the game, similar to the muskets and arquebuses found in the original two titles. Familiar creatures such as the lizard-like Europe's will appear alongside the much larger and deadlier threats all the way up to wyverns and drakes. Admittedly, much to the dismay of my audience. I have uh, slept on the entirety of Pillars of Eternity for a while. Since Avowed was revealed, I've continued to swear to myself again and again and again and again that I will play Pillars. And you still have my word. Pillars will be done. I don't know if in such a busy review time I will get it done this year, but it will be done before Avowed comes out. So this will likely be much more impactful to others. But for me, as someone who is never played Pillars of Eternity before, just seeing that you can imbue weapons with spells and that there are specific two-handed spells versus one-handed spells. So just like Skyrim, you could have a sword and a spell or just a spell on both hands. And I hope that when you're using two of the same spell and then you cast them with both hands, that's where that two-handed spell comes in. It's like a different enhanced form of it. That sounds awesome. Because typically in Skyrim, I never play as a mage. It just doesn't... It's not that fun to me. I like the stealth archer. I like the warrior take on it, but not magic all that often. And I hope that that's something Obsidian can do is make magic feel impactful on a level of when you're casting it, the animation, the feel of it, because magic is very good in Elder Scrolls. It's just, it's never been an appealing play style for me. I do hope they end up striking gold, however, with this magic system. The combat seems to be more loadout based 
than the Elder Scrolls, which gives you mountains of spells in a gigantic list. Warriors will get access to more physical attacks like sword play, powerful kicks, and shield bashes, while casters will be given a range of spellbook options to customize and tailor their combat style with attacks bound to specific buttons. That's very encouraging to hear because, again, when we're taking a look at Skyrim, I think it's still one of the greatest games of all time because of how much it transformed the industry when it entered. But Skyrim, as it continues to re-release and re-release and re-release, we are reminded continuously how the combat isn't very good. And seeing that Obsidian is going to assign specific skills to specific buttons based off your build is awesome because that's an evolution of the combat system that needs to exist. The other part of it, which I'm a little less convinced about and we won't know until we have the game, is the AI. The reason this is important to bring up is because the Outer Worlds, I thought, felt pretty good when you were running around and shooting. Is it the level of like Titanfall 2 or Battlefield or Halo Infinite? No. But for an RPG, I thought it felt pretty dang good. What happened was while the shooting felt good, the AI just kind of stood there and oftentimes didn't engage. So fingers crossed that while the combat is going to be seemingly engaging for the player that the enemies are also doing things to make it more difficult make it more interesting but again we'll see that in due time i'm a huge pillars of eternity fan and seeing stills of avowed's early builds filled me with tons of excitement as much as i love the tactical combat of pillars seeing the classic crpg add new dimensions with action-oriented combat is undoubtedly going to bring a whole legion of new fans to the franchise i think the outer world fans should be particularly excited too I like to hear this because builds are so key to role-playing games, but what this screams to me is that once you play Pillars of Eternity, you can sort of see a template that's been laid out, and now it's transitioning over to, let's say, a AAA space, and they're adding an action element to it. And because it's been planned out, it's been iterated upon, it seems as if this can be transitioned a little bit easier because a lot of the conceptualizing for the system has been done. Let's talk about the Outer Worlds, though, because Jez is saying that if you like the Outer Worlds, which your boy loves, that you'll be in good company with Avowed. If the Outer Worlds was Obsidian's take on a Fallout-style game, Avowed is undoubtedly Obsidian's take on the Elder Scrolls. The two-handed, first-person combat style is unmistakable, but there are obvious differences in early documentation. At least directly compared to the likes of Skyrim and Oblivion, Avowed seems to be a far more colorful game, reminding me more of the Outer Worlds. Luminescent cave mushrooms, verdant forests awash with gigantic flora, and hulking sunlit temples complete with skeleton-infested depths and tombs are plentiful. It came as a bit of a surprise given the game's original trailer, which seemed like it was trying to strike a much darker tone, save for the neon spell effects. Pillars of Eternity does seem to take environmental interactivity a bit further than the Outer Worlds too, complete with swimming capabilities. We've even heard of destructible environments using lit torches and fire spells to burn down block entryways too. Fire spells leave areas coated in flames too, which cascade against the walls and floors. Hearing that the tombs are plentiful is music to my ears. I don't think I'll ever forget when I played Skyrim for the first time. It came out over a weekend, so I just sunk endless hours into it and that feeling of once I arrived at White Run thinking to myself hmm, I'm gonna go this way and finding caves and in those caves were stories and in those caves were unique and rare weapons and armor it's one of my favorite gaming memories and so just to hear that there are plentiful amounts of these caves these tombs that type of stuff is awesome because we already saw with the Outer Worlds on a tighter budget what Obsidian was trying to do. And now with a bigger budget with Microsoft at their back, I expect things to be much more expansive. I expect there to be quests in a lot of these areas. So hearing there's a lot of them is extremely encouraging for me personally. Beyond that, though, the color, I think, is a bit surprising for the exact reason that Jez mentioned. When you looked at the trailer, it seemed like this war-torn land. It was desolate. Didn't seem like there was going to be a ton of color, but then suddenly a purple spell came up in the hand. You're like, okay, there's a little bit of that. But otherwise, it looked pretty sad, depressing. And I thought that was the vision they were going for. But hey, who knows when the full game comes out. Beyond that, environmental interactivity is always good. It's always good when your things in games can do two things one being in combat one being out of combat so your fireball can whoosh set someone ablaze kill them but your fireball can also whoosh light that blocked entryway on fire and the same thing with imagine electricity you can shock your foes or you can activate some mechanical object to me it's so important 
when games have abilities that do multiple things. And I'm hoping that it's not just the fire spell. I imagine they wouldn't just make it the fire spell, but I'm really hoping that's not the case. The content I saw does represent a pre-alpha state with certain aspects like lighting and textures not fully implemented, which is one reason I'm not sharing the documentation I've been shown. The finished art style is expected to elevate what we saw in the Outer Worlds though, with a brighter, more lively color palette, which is weird to say because honestly I thought the Outer Worlds was really colorful, although it could end up looking a bit darker akin to the debut trailer. I only saw a couple of areas, although it could represent the diversity of locales Obsidian aims to deliver. As for the story and layout, I can only speculate. I'm not sure whether it will go full-blown open world like the modern Elder Scrolls games or utilize something more like the Outer Worlds hub system, which connects large areas to an overworld map complete with interior areas and dungeons. I'd expect it to be the latter, as it gives Obsidian greater control over the pacing of the narrative, which is one of the studio's biggest strengths. There is some evidence that it may go full open world though, given previous job listings, thanks for the tip Kimona Tong. Even in its pre-alpha state, Avowed looks like it plays extremely well with refined action RPG combat set in a vibrant medieval world I cannot wait to explore. What I find the most interesting is even the slight possibility that it may not be open world. Now, just like Jez had mentioned and I had reported here and on Defining Duke, there was this job listing here which mentions a cohesive open world. I would be very surprised if Obsidian tried to make a Skyrim-like game that wasn't open world with a AAA budget this is where I just hold back my excitement a slight bit on this front because it is very hard to capture a level of choice and consequence in an open world where you're doing things and things are changing because there's just so much already there happening. It's very rare. I think I can only think of The Witcher 3 and a couple of others that come to mind as open world games that really dabble with choice and consequence but very few even make it feel super impactful. It's always a very delicate balance. I'm hoping, and I know I'm alone on this, but I'm hoping they go large hub base. That doesn't mean I'll be disappointed if it's open world because if they show me how choice and consequence works in the game and it looks very convincing, I trust Obsidian enough to be excited for it. But as of this point in time, I look at them as just team hub based, right? Like they kill it in the hub worlds they continue to kill it in hub worlds and i feel like their design functions best within a hub world that said devil's advocate to myself we are talking about a lot of the team that helped make fallout new vegas which is i think like the best open world rpg in the terms of choice and consequence right like that is the top dog granted it was over a decade ago, and I think it was a product of a blueprint through Fallout 3 that was set up so they could focus on those things, where this is a brand new IP with a ton of new assets and systems being set up, so it's a lot different. But I think if anyone could accomplish it, it's Obsidian. It's just that we have to consider what they're really good at, what they're familiar with, with something that would be kind of new for them in compared to a lot of their previous projects. I feel like there's a good chance we'll see Avowed in a playable state by E3 2022 at the latest given the quality of the content I've seen, which may be even several months old at this point. Perhaps there's even a chance we'd see it at the Game Awards at the end of the year. I teased on my podcast recently that I'd bet money that we see another Xbox exclusive, Hellblade 2, at the Game Awards this year, since I've indeed heard it was the plan to show more of the game by the end of the year. Perhaps we could get a two-for-one deal and see Avowed show up there too, but it may be too early just yet. And what's interesting about that is that's not even scoop related because you can see here, this comes from Xbox Wire when The Outer Worlds 2 was revealed. For those who are wondering about Avowed, the team is hard at work making something we're sure fans of our games and the Pillars of Eternity universe are going to love. While we're not showing anything right now, we're looking forward to showing off what we have been working on soon. That was written in June. So to me, soon has to be this year. My assumption has always been we'll see Avowed at the Game Awards just like we saw The Outer Worlds at the Game Awards. We also know Phil Spencer and his team seem to love Jeff Keighley. They revealed the Xbox Series X at the Game Awards. So my assumption is I think we will get a two-for-one deal here. We're more than likely going to see Hellblade 2. I think that's almost definite, and I would be very surprised if we didn't see Avowed before the year's end. That's just my assumption, though, based off what is written here on the Xbox Wire. I don't know why you'd say soon and then show it off one year later. It's probably got to be some point within 2021. So time will tell on that. But overall, very encouraging, fantastic read from Jez Corden. Again, the link to his article will be in the description down below. 
do check it out support him because he continues to provide a lot of scoops that are very important for this community my overall wrap-up thoughts on it are as always for avowed and actually really anything obsidian related i'm excited they've been killing it lately i think underneath the xbox brand they're one of the most flexible studios when you look at what they did with the outer worlds and then grounded they've really started to hit their stride where they're doing all different projects and they seem to be working out of course the past speaks for itself with the likes of pillars of eternity which i've heard good things about tyranny which i've heard great things about i know i've slept on their crpgs but hey of course we gotta bring up the goat fallout new vegas which everyone loves to some extent or can at least admire its design so I'm feeling pretty good about this. This just confirms a lot of the things to me that I was expecting with the game. It is Skyrim from Obsidian. And as someone who loves Skyrim, and that was a building block, a major building block for this channel, I'm really excited to see what is, I think, Bethesda Game Studios' biggest competitor, even though they're underneath the same umbrella. I think they still compete. Take on their biggest game. So we'll see in due time how that looks. I think it'll be at the Game Awards. But where do you think we'll see it? And what do you feel about this entire leak? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts. Other than that, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below, along with the Patreon. Big thank you to all the patrons and members continuing to support the content here. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.